Welcome to my lecture series. On my previous video, I have taken the Euler's equation. Now we will see the thermodynamic analysis of a turbo machine and the elementary air foil theory. This is what we are going to see. Now that the gas turbine engine will fall into the category of steady process, that is the mass that flows in, that flows out. Again this process repeats, repeats again and again. So to consider this, what we'll do is we'll use the fluid dynamic equation along with the thermodynamic equation. So what is this fluid dynamic equation in Bernoulli's equation? We have learnt it, right? The same thing we are going to apply. And I'll explain you what is that Bernoulli's equation in my later videos. Now for now you can understand we are doing the combination of both the fluid dynamic and the thermodynamic analysis to find the work. That upon combining the equation you will get U1 plus P1 V1 plus c1 square by the, the input work plus c2 square so this is what the equation that i said this you might remember that you have read in the fluid dynamics the same equation i mean i have used here where u1 stands for internal energy p1 v1 is the flow, flow work done on or by the fluid sometimes so in case of a compressor, the work is done on the fluid and in case of a turbine, the work is done by the fluid. So this is the P1, V1 is the flow work done. Next is C1 squared by 2. This is what the velocity of the fluid. Z1 is potential energy. See here it is mentioned, it is at the same height, it is placed in the heat input. And W is work input. Here, heat input, work input. In a gas turbine, the rate of flow of fluid is large and the surface available for heat transfer is small and therefore the process is adiabatic. So, see, there will be some insulations all over. So, the and, uh, heat transfer will be less. That is, we can consider Q is equal to 0. Applying this on this equation, what this will cancel this one, right? That is, there won't be any Q, U1. For now, this Z1 is equal to Z2, right? Then we can equate it here. This will get cancelled each other because both are equal. Rewriting it for W, what you will get? U2 minus U1 plus. Now, this U is what? U is internal energy. And we know that internal energy U is equal to Cv into substituting this instead of U. And replacing this equation we will get. Again we know this Pv is equal to Rt. Instead of Pv we will substitute Rt. We will take the Cv in common. Now T2 minus T1 will be the common factor here. Plus R. And another thing you know is Cp minus Cv is equal to R. Substituting the value of Cp here. Here Cp into So finally what we have derived the enthalpy change. So this work done W will be equal to H02 minus H01. So if suppose we neglect this kinetic energy. Velocity is what kinetic energy? If suppose if we neglect this term, what we will get finally? W is equal to H2 minus H1. That is W is equal to delta H. If change of enthalpy is negative and we call it as the work of a turbine and if the change of enthalpy is positive, we call it as the work of a compressor. See, if this is positive, if answer is positive, we call it as compressor. And if the answer is negative, we call it as turbine. Uh, just a recap, in my previous uh, video, we have seen that Euler's equation, right? What it is? E is equal to rate of energy transfer. E is equal to Ct1 u1 minus Ct2 u2. If this value is positive, we call it as the uh, energy transfer of a turbine and if this value is negative we call it as a turbine sorry compressor 
Now this is vice versa. If rate of change of enthalpy, this is rate of change of enthalpy is positive, we call it as a compressor. And in case if it is negative, we call it as a turbine. The work input or work done or the rate of energy transfer is vice versa to each other. This is vice versa to and the efficiency of turbo machines. For example, if you consider that is working at particular condition and exhausting at another condition, for sure there will be some losses in it. That is, it might do less work than expected by the expansion process in case of a turbine or it may absorb more amount of work in case of a compression. So this is where the term isentropic efficiency came. Whatever it is, a machine, a machine can never be a never give us a hundred percent okay so if it is the case there will be some losses that loss we call it as isentropic efficiency we measure it with the term of isentropic efficiency now we'll see the isentropic efficiency yeah is isentropic work input this is eta c now let me tell you one thing in case of a compressor what happen is we will give the work to the compressor that is work is given as input in case of a turbine the work is extracted from the turbine okay that is we give some work to the compressor and we will make the compressor run and we will get the pressure rise in case of a compressor if 1 to 2 this is the actual compression process but actually it has to happen like this because of losses, it will happen like this. This is the loss. This loss is what we measure it as isentropic efficiency. This is the efficiency. If a compressor is working efficient, this distance will get reduced. That is what this eta c represents. Practical explanation of that. And if eta t, that is efficiency of a turbine, actual work output, But it should happen in this way 3 to 4 dash. This is the isentropic process and this is the actual process. The same thing as I explained in the case of turbine. So the more the work extracted, actual the work should be extracted in this process 3 to 4 dash. But this will not happen because of the practical losses that takes place in the turbine. That is what the actual cycle 3 to 4. Now how can we represent this in the formula? Isentropic work out input. What is isentropic work input? This is 2 dash, right? T2 dash minus T1. This to this, right? Divided by T2 minus T1. You need not to memorize any formulas. Just you have to understand what is what. And now, in case of a turbine, see the stage 3 has higher temperature than the stage 4. So, T3 minus actual first is so t3 minus t4 divided by t3 minus t4 dash this is eta t just a recap now that we have derived the thermodynamic equation this is what the work input or the work done factor uh, work done uh, that we have derived here okay work done is w is equal to delta h if the work done is positive, we call it as the work input for a compressor. And if the work done is negative, it is the work done by the turbine. So this is vice versa to the energy transfer. In case of energy transfer, if it is positive, we call it as a turbine. And if the energy transfer is negative, we call it as a compressor. And the isentropic efficiency we have seen, eta c and eta t. Eta c is what the isentropic efficiency of a compressor. And this is the isentropic efficiency of a turbine. T2 dash minus T1 by T2 minus T1 and this is how I, how I have explained you. For example, in case of a compressor, the process 1 to 2 is called the actual compression process. But isentropically, it has to happen 1 to 2 dash. That means this is the efficient way there will not be any losses. In the practical development of a compressor, there will be for sure losses. So, the actual cycle will be deviated from the isentropic cycle. So, 1 to 2 dash will be deviated from 1 to 2 that is the actual cycle so the uh, uh, this ratio is what we call it as efficiency this ratio should be less so that we have seen the uh, thermodynamic uh, dynamic part we will go for the elementary airfoil theory
why is this important here why we need to study airfoil theory in propulsion because the shape of the turbine blades or the compressor blades are in the airfoil shape so this is an airfoil and what all you know about airfoil is and by definition it is a streamlined body bounded principally by two flattened curves and whose length and width are very large in comparison with the thickness correct the length and width are very large in comparison with the it has a thick rounded leading edge and a sharp trailing edge the backbone lying the midway between upper and the lower is called camber line this is the camber line and the line connecting the uh, leading edge and the trailing edge is what we call it as chord line and this is the location of maximum thickness and this one is the distance of maximum thickness from the leading edge this is the location of maximum camber the distance between the main chord line and the chord main camber line and the chord line is what we call it as camber this is the camber this is the difference between mean chord line uh, chord line and called as camber and another is unsymmetrical so in case of a symmetrical airfoil there will not be camber there is no camber this is a symmetrical airfoil and in case of unsymmetrical airfoil there will be camber the chord line camber line on the figure what you see is the unsymmetrical airfoil now when such a blade that is suitably shaped and properly oriented in the flow is placed in a placed in the flow the normal force acting on it is considerably large than the drag so airfoil shapes are used in aircraft wings and turbo uh, tur consider a camber or airfoil like this when it is placed in the flow see the air particles will now move on this side and on this over this surface like this so on this convex side that is the shape this is bent convex this side the air particles that strike here and however because of this there will be a centrifugal force that will try to leave away from the surface okay that will move away from the surface the centrifugal force is nothing but the pressure the, this pressure because of this force will be very less when compared to the force here here the pressure will be high that is the same thing when the air particles strike here the same centrifugal force will make it to travel in the direction of the blade so here it will try to stick to the surface here it will strike the surface of the blade so here here the pressure will be very high pressure will be very high so we call this as pressure side here that is the positive pressure or this we call it as pressure side and here the pressure is very less and we call it as negative pressure or the suction side now at some point see here the velo pressure is very less so the velocity will be very high and to uh, and here the pressure is very high so the velocity will be very less and after moving away from the surface at the trailing edge this velocities should be equalized right they will try to equalize the velocity not actually they will be equal they will try to uh, equalize the velocities so what will happen at some point here the velocity will be st will start accelerating here it will be very much accelerated and here the velocity is very less right and at some point the velocity will start accelerating here sorry decelerating here so the so as to equalize this but actually there it will not be equal as a result of the this equalizing there comes a value called force and that is the lift force normal force when these two pressures or the velocities they try to equalize at the trailing edge and they could not equalize and finally a lift force is developed and it gets uh, lifted this is how the airfoil works this this is the same principle on which the blades also work when you compare with an aircraft wing imagine this as a wing so here the surface area is large a very minute pressure difference 
is much more efficient or it is much more essential that can produce a higher lift here okay that is when the camber if the camber is slight that is sufficient there need not be a highly cambered airfoil a slightly cambered airfoil is much more efficient in a flight okay that is for an aircraft for a whole aircraft a slightly cambered airfoil is fine but in case of a turbine blade see this is the turbine blade and here the surface area is very less and it needs high pressure difference so as to create the same lift force that this generates or the lift force that it needs so here what they use is highly cambered airfoil the camber should be very large in case of a turbine blade and the tam uh, camber is very less in case of a wing in case of a compressor what happens it is a work absorbing machine right here the lift force is exerted by the rotor blades on the fluid and in case of a turbine the lift force is exerted on the wings and the turbine in the wings and the turbine the lift force is exerted in the case of a compressor the lift force is exerted by the rotor blades on the compressor a small recap now that we have seen what is an airfoil and it has a leading edge trailing edge and the line connecting between the two is called a scod line and there is a main camber line that divides the airfoil into two and the distance between this main camber and the maximum ca maximum camber line sorry main camber line and cord line we call it as maximum camber and when this airfoil shape is placed in the flow that is in case of a turbo machine we use highly cambered airfoil when it is placed in the flow it generates lift that is what we need uh, finally we have seen thermodynamic analysis and this elementary airfoil theory has gone over from the next video session we will be seeing axial compressors work done factor velocity triangles everything will be covered in the next video thank you for watching